So last time we learned how to make shapes in vPython. They are incredibly easy. You use the name of the shape and then you tell it the various properties that you want. So for example here, I want to create a sphere that is located at 0, 0, 0, that has a radius of 0.25 and that is the color green. And if I hit control 2, that's exactly what I get right here. And I think I need to make this a little bit wider. There we go. All right, alternatively, I can rescale this. Um, and I can rotate it around. And that's nice, that's wonderful, that's great for creating pictures. But what we're usually interested in is creating some sort of animation. So I have to get this thing to move. Uh, in order to make it move, I've got to change its position. Now here's the problem with the way I've written the code as it currently is. It's currently, this line three is simply a statement to create a sphere. And vPython creates that sphere and that sphere's out there there's no real way for me to access the sphere again. And so what I need to do is I need to give the sphere a name. And I can do that using a variable just like we used with numbers before. So let's call this my sphere equals this. And now what vPython is doing is it's going to create a sphere and it's going to assign that sphere this name, my sphere. Uh, nothing different is going to happen now except that internally it's got a name attached to this thing. Now I know that seems weird to be storing a sphere in a variable the same way we stored numbers, but that's the beauty of a programming language like Python, is that it will treat a, a 3D object like this the same way it treats a number, the same way it treats a vector, the same way it treats a list, the same way it treats text. It's all just data stored in this one location. So that's why we call these things variables, but really what they're what they're more like is 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 buckets. It's it's I want to put this sphere into this bucket here. So now what I can do is whenever I want to change the sphere, I can change a property of it. So for example, if I want to change its color to red, I can just change my sphere's color to red. The way I do that is I take my sphere and I use dot color. So the dot indicates a property. So the dot indicates a property of the object. So the technical term for a thing like this is an object, and this is a property of the object, or I think it might be an attribute of the object. There's probably a more uh, correct technical term. But you're here to learn how to use vPython, not the technical terms for everything. Uh, so what I can do is I can just reset this to the color dot red. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna come down to line three and it's going to say, all right, I need to make a sphere. This is the location, this is the radius, this is the color. And then here I say, oh, I need to change the color to red. I made a mistake in line three. So what it's gonna do, it's gonna make our sphere. It's gonna initially be green and then it's gonna to turn to red. Now you're looking at the screen saying, I understand what you said, but I never saw a green sphere. That's because the computer moves through these lines very quickly. So in order to have an appreciable, noticeable change, I need to be able to animate this thing. I need to be able to control how fast it goes. And the way we do that is by making a loop. Uh, a loop is a structure in a computer program that the computer program uh, repeats over and over again for as many times as you want it to. So the way we're gonna set this up is we're gonna set up a while loop. There are various types of loops, and if you're an experienced programmer, at the end of this video, you're gonna tell me I should be using a for loop instead. But for most applications in physics, the while loop is the most appropriate one. So the way you set up a while loop is you, you put in the word while, you notice it turns purple because it's a word that the computer recognizes. And while means while the next condition is true, I want you to repeat the following block of code. So here I put in parentheses some condition. We're gonna fill that blank in in a little bit. Um, so this is just a placeholder here right now. We're not gonna run the code just yet. Then you put in a colon. So the colon is saying, hey computer, I am setting up a block of code that I want you to pay attention to. And now watch what magic thing happens when I press the enter key. Lo and behold, my text is automatically indented. So the way vPython keeps track of what code is in the loop is by indentation. So I can type in some code here, and then I can type enter, and it's indented again, and I can type in more code. And basically, whenever I want the loop to finish, I just hit backspace, 
and I exit. And I like to put in a little something at the end here to tell me I'm at the end of program. I'm gonna tell it to print end of program. Computer, computer programming is not difficult. You just do the thing that makes sense. Uh, you just have to figure out what the thing is that makes sense. All right, so this is some gobbledygook. We're gonna clean that up in just a second. It's just a placeholder for right now. What I wanna do is I want this thing to loop. Let's say I want it to do this loop five times. All right, so let's say I want it to go one, two, three, four, five times around this loop. So what I need is I need some kind of counter. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna set a new variable, call it i. We're gonna set this equal to one and we're gonna call this my loop counter. So in other words, this is the number that's gonna keep track of how many times we have been around the loop. So if I'm looking to, to, to have the loop go around five times, what I can do at the end of each loop is I can increase i by one. And now here's something that a lot of students struggle with when they're first learning programming. I wanna take i, I wanna add one to it, and I wanna make that the new value for i. Now you look at this as, as somebody who's been through algebra and you know this is an impossible equation. There's no number i that will solve this equation. Well, that's because this isn't really an equation. This is an assignment. What you're doing is, you're telling the computer, I want you to take your current value for i. So in this, for, for the first round, that's gonna be one. I want you to take one and I want you to add one to it. Of course, that's gonna give you two. Now I want you to take that new value two and store it in spot i. So the fact that these two i's are the same doesn't matter to the computer. What you're doing is you're overriding the value for i. It's, it's essentially the same as when you save a document, right? When you are writing something in Word, you're changing the text all the time. And every time you hit Control S or hit the little save icon, you're overriding the file. It goes to the same name. It's now got different data in it. You can completely change what's inside it and it all saves under the same name. That's exactly what we're doing here. We're saying, I want you to do a calculation here on the right and I want you to make that the new value for i. So at this point, the computer does a calculation forgets the value of i and stores the new value here. So i is gonna be one, then we'll add one to it and it'll be two. Then we'll take two plus one and it'll be three. Then we'll take three plus one and it'll be four. Take four plus one and it'll be five. Take five plus one and it'll be six. And that's the point at which I want the loop to exit. So that's where we come to this condition. So we want this to continue as long as i is less than or equal to five. So what I've put in here is I've put in what's called a logical statement. Uh, this thing is going to be a true statement as long as i is less than or equal to five. But once i becomes greater than five, it will become a false statement and will no longer go around the loop. Okay, so I've got my loop here. Uh, I can get rid of my gobbledygook. Let's start putting in what we want to have happen. Um, let's suppose I want to have the sphere move by some amount each frame. Let's suppose we want the sphere to move to the right. So again, I wanna change something about my sphere. If I'm moving it, the thing that I wanna change is its position, its pause value. So I'm gonna put in dot pause, right? And what I wanna do is I wanna increase that. Uh, actually, what I wanna change, let's say I wanna have it move to the right. So I only wanna change its X component. I can put in dot X. So this, is, this has a couple of dots to it. Remember, a dot indicates the attribute. So we've got my underscore fear, sphere dot position dot x. I wanna increase that by one. So the same way I, I, I increased this here, the way I increase something is I take the original, I'm gonna copy it so I don't have to retype all that. I take the original and I uh, copy and paste it into here and then I just increase it. Let's increase it by one. Let's suppose it moves by one unit each frame each time we go around the loop, okay? So what I've got here is I've got I increasing by one each time. I've got the sphere moving to the right each time. So I'm taking the sphere's position, as the X coordinate of its position. I'm increasing that by one each time. All right, so let's run this program and see what happens. So I should have a green sphere moving to the right. Okay, well, my green sphere definitely ended up to the right, but I didn't really see it move. And again, that's the same problem we ran into earlier with changing the color, is that the program runs over this thing five times very quickly. That's where we need what's called the rate command. What rate does is it has you specify the number of frames per second. So this is gonna be the number of uh, frames or loops, loops, loops per second. 
and I deleted my previous note. I need to add another note here that the dot indicates uh, an attribute. Here we go. So let's run this again, and what we should see now is it's going to move much slower. It's going to move one tick every second. Are we ready? Here we go. Tick, 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 tick. Now what's happening there is it's, it looks like it's getting smaller, but that's because we're zooming, the, the, the window will zoom out automatically each frame. Uh, there's different ways to control the zoom factor and everything, uh, but we, you can get into that later once you feel more comfortable. I know, by the way, it did print end of program down here. Let's actually maximize this so that when we watch it, we can see the end of program come out. So here we've got again, tick, 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 end of program. So you see it went five times. So you can see it looped around five times. Uh, we saw five ticks. Uh, and then it exited the loop and went to end of program here. You can change this, right? You can change this to be 10. We can have it go even farther across the screen. Let's do control two. Oh, and I need to reload my WebGL. That happens every now and then. Just hit reload, it'll be fine. So now it's going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 ticks and then we reach the end of program. And I can increase that to 100 if I want. I can give it go 100 spaces out to the right. And at this point you're saying, Brian, that's, that's gonna take a long time. Well, that's where we increase the rate value. So let's make this do 10 frames per second now. Control two, and it's gonna go faster. Boop, 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 boop. And it's going along for 100. And we should be getting end of program at some point. Nope, so going to that. Okay, there we got into program. Now, at first, another thing you can change is you can change the amount that it moves by. So I can change this to say 0 0.1. So this way it won't move quite as drastically at the beginning, right? So there it's moving much smoother. And this leads you to a nice rule for animation. If you're looking to make an animation and you want it to look smooth, you make that step size small, right? So this is the size of the step that the thing is moving in. In fact, we can give that its own uh, its own name. Let's call that DX 0.1. So that's gonna be what's, the, the technical term for this is step size because it's the size of the step that the thing takes each frame. So I just make that a small number and the animation is much smoother. See that? Nice and smooth. And I can decrease it, make it even smoother. So here's the trade-off. I make it smoother, it's, but then it's going to move more slowly, right? So there it's moving more slowly. I can increase the rate and then it'll go back to normal speed. And so by adjusting the step size and the rate, you can make this thing move much more smoothly across the screen. Okay, I have taken up enough of your time for now. Um, next time, I tell you what, let me do this. I'm gonna post these videos. This is my, I think, fourth one in this series. So I'm gonna post these four. What I'd like for you to do is, what questions do you have uh, based on these basic stuff we've done with vPython so far. Let, so far. Let me know in the comments below or on Twitter at Let's Code Physics, and uh, I'll make the next few videos based on questions that you have. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.